Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. This video, what are we gonna be talking about? We're gonna be talking about some common methods that you might wanna use when you are working with arrays. So stay tuned, I'm pumped. Hopefully you are as well. Sponsored message, whoop. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so first thing, we're going to be talking about comparing arrays. So check this out. Let's say we create a new array and we just call this grades two. We'll call the first one grades one, just for clarity. And we're going to make it have exactly the same elements. The one, two, three, 72 and five. Now what I wanna do is I wanna say if grades one equals grades two. And we've talked about this before where this comparison is actually going to compare if they are the exact same entity, not necessarily the same value. So we'll print equal there just to see what happens. And when we run this, nothing happens. So let's try another version. We could say if grades one dot equals and then pass in grades two. So this is the way I've taught you so far. And let's see what happens with this. We'll put equals there, run it, and still nothing. What in the heck? So. How can we actually compare to see if these have the same values? In this situation, it's actually going to check if they are the same array. They're actually not. They are two separate arrays, they just happen to have the same values. So that technique's not going to work with arrays. And just to prove that to you, watch this. We'll print grades one and we'll print grades two. We'll put a plus sign there and a space. Running this, we get two different values. You can see this one ends in 1D and this one ends in EE. So it's basically comparing to see if these have the same value and they don't. That's because they point to two separate arrays. So to actually compare if two arrays are equal, you have to say arrays dot equals. And it says here, if both arrays contain the same number of elements and all corresponding pairs of elements in the two arrays are equal. There's also deep equals. This is important for nested arrays. So basically it's going to make sure that any nested arrays also have matching values. But we're just working with simple arrays, so we'll just use equals. We'll pass in grades one and grades two. Hovering over this, you can see this returns a Boolean, so you can put this inside of a condition, like so. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say equals. Run this bad boy, and look at that, we get equals finally. So that is how you compare for values. You can use this technique if you're comparing to see if they are the same object. So if you wanna see that, what we could do is we could actually assign grades one to grades two, now when we run this, we get all of these pass as equal. That's because they are actually pointing to the same exact array. Now another method you might see is fill. So what does this look like? First, let's get rid of this and we'll say arrays.fill. And we're just going to put, well, what's it asking for? A is the array to be filled and val is the value to be stored in all elements of the array. So this is how we can fill an array with a particular value. So we'll say grades one, we can actually just get rid of the one since we just have one now. And the value we're going to put in is 72. We'll output the array just to make sure. And check this out, every value is now 72. That's useful if you're working with objects. So for example, let's say we have an array of string and let's say we just assign this a new string array of size five. We'll comment this out for just a second and we'll output it to see what we get. You can see we get null, 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 null. And maybe you don't want those nulls and instead you want an empty string. We well, can do that real easy just by throwing it into the arrays.fill and putting an empty string right there. Now when we run it, check this out. We get empty strings. You can't see them because they're empty. Now another cool method, and this might be more practical once we get into lists, but just trust me for a second. What you can do is you can say arrays.asList and what this is going to do is it's going to return a fixed size list. So let's just give this a try. We'll pass in grades. So this returns a list, so we actually have to assign it to a list. So what's that going to look like? We just say list, and then in the less than and greater than symbols, we just put type string. We give it a name, we can just call it testing, and then we assign. So hover over list, and you will need to import list from java.util. And there we go. 
So if that has absolutely no meaning to you, that's totally okay. Basically, a list is just a different way of storing data. It's similar to an array, but it's a little bit more dynamic, and that's actually one of the things we're gonna be talking about real soon in the next uh, video or so.